Every year for the last 10 years, 341 and 132 overall. His winning percentage right up there with the best that has ever coached at Kansas. You all know what KU's done since the Big 12 was formed in a regular season? How about 158 and 34? How's that? Real back into the ball game for Texas a and Key player for them here last night. Tipped out of bounds by Kansas. Tim Allen. How big is that lump in your throat? Wow. <laughs> hey, honor well deserved. Wow. And when you see those kinds of things, it makes you appreciate where you've been, what you've done. KU, Robinson, Collins. Collins again. You know what's amazing about that, Paul? When I first started this, I was doing K-State games. KU folks didn't like me. I saw a lot of crimson. <laughs> And blue people up there. Uh, don't worry, they still don't like you. 1973, when you were really good on the mound for great teams, and you've been great at this too. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, they'll replace you as a broadcaster, but they won't replace you as a travel partner and a friend for me. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> we can travel well. <laughs> Larry Conley trained you well. He did. <laughs> Talked to him yesterday. He's down to the Southeastern Conference room. Oh, you talk about problems. Oh, wow. boy. Now we're back to action. Kirk. Carter, six on that shot clock, and a long try from Carter won't go. Look at Darnell Jackson hustle down the rebound. Look at Collins push it off the wind choppers and down inside to Cole Aldridge. Block the finish. Cole Aldridge giving you a little flash of what he is about. He has patiently worked in practice, backed up the people that are in front of him on the front line. He'll pick up big time minutes for the Jayhawks next year. And right now, the way he's playing over the last few weeks, he sure looks like he'll be ready. Just by the way, not to dwell on this subject, but I was dumbfounded when Tam Allen walked over. He didn't know what to do. So his daughter, Alexis, just reached over and ripped my headset off. How about that? The Allens are... Without scoring, how much is how many points does he work for his team during the game? A bunch. Let me just take a look at his steals. Totals. Oh, 70 steals this year. Travel call. That's the one thing about Kansas. You can use, lose a player with the quality of a Mario Chalmers, and they just bring in somebody else on the perimeter. The three perimeter players they have right now, their regular point guard, Russell Robinson, Sharon Collins, and Brandon Rush. They really don't, don't lose a thing. And Chalmers already back out to the KU bench. Still limping. Still back with his teammates. There you see him just walking down the bench there, getting ready to sit down. Joseph Jones knocks down a jump shot. And boy, the Aggies right there. They are hanging in. Just five points for him last night. Six strong rebounds. Played just 25 minutes because he was in some foul trouble. Because minutes held down last night in the foul problem. He might come back a little stronger here this afternoon. Rush. Sasha Khan. Didn't get it. Cole Aldridge can't get it. It's out of bounds and belongs to a &M. They say the KU hit a last. So the Aggies down. Kevin Durant, both those players. Kind of players that could just put their team on their shoulders and say, hey, just follow me, boys. We'll take this one on home. I know you remember the shot he made in Allen Fieldhouse, a game that we did that won a game for Iowa State. Iowa State was a real thorn in the side for the Kansas Jayhawks during those years. Not just up in Ames, but also a problem for KU at Allen Fieldhouse. Dominic Kirk nails a three, his second one. Got to get some balanced scoring out on the perimeter. Dominic Kirk has been playing well recently, scored well last night with five of six threes, doing it again today. Josh Carter needs to step up as well. Sasha Khan and this strong rebound. That was Brian Davis and AM on a 6 0 run, and they've got the ball right now. That's great front line play by Texas AM right there because Sasha Khan is at 6 11. They've got the first year player, Cole Aldridge, also 6 11. That's about as big as they get at the college level across the front line, and AM still able to cover their defensive glass. Kirk couldn't pull the trigger on that one. Now Jones. Kirk. Little or play right there, passing it out of the double team. So Dominic Kirk finding some range now, and when he gets a rolling, he can really get a rolling. He really, really hurt Kansas State last night, and now it's a 34-34 tie. Two hot hands on the same side of the floor for Texas A&M. Dominic Kirk, Joseph Jones, they feed off of each other. Aldridge blocked, and the ball belongs to A&M on the possession arrow. And I'm really having some strong possessions. Last two defensive stands, defensive rebound against the big front line. They get points from Dominique Kirk on the offensive end. Now stuff a shot on the defensive end. So another stop for AM. They're working their way right back into this one. We're even at 34 all. 
First time since it was 13-0. 33 seconds left and a half, and the Aggies with a chance to go in at halftime with the lead. There's an eight-second differential in the shot clock and the game clock. You always look at a half, and how do you close? And one of the questions was, well, if Kansas closed strong, it would really put a hurting on Texas a and m but it was Texas A&M playing some catch-up. Now you're down to what probably going to be your final possession. Three to shoot it. Dominique Kirk from way outside off the front of the rim. Joseph Jones gets it back. And he was on the strike. So it'll be KU basketball. Coming up on the arrival of the Auto Parts halftime report from Studio 66, there's a special presentation, some ACC thrillers today, and analysis of this first half. And Mark Turgeon goes with a defensive set right now, brings Roland off the bench. He brings Alanu in to set up strong defensively for AM. Jerron Collins down the lane. Didn't get it. Cole Aldridge got a hand on it to have him score. Really tough to change a whole lot if you're Texas A&M because of the balance that Kansas has. They played eight in the first half. Seven different players scored. The coaches know the M.O. of their opponent. They know what they do. So the, this time of the year, they're on a whole lot of surprises you can pull for the second half of the game. Russell Robinson missed it. Arthur took it back up and in. Five points for Arthur, and the Jayhawks score first in the second half. Shot comes from deep and comes off soft on the same shot at the side of the floor that the shot came up from. Doesn't happen all that often. Arthur ended up in the right position. Dominique Kirk, oh, what a shooter he is. He carried two threes in the first half at eight points. He's a 41% three-point shooter. And Russell yeah. Robinson's going to get the first shot of trying to cover him here in the second half for Kansas. He really hurt K-State last night, didn't he? Working against Arnell Jackson, kicks it out. Both Yearbach, long try. He got knocked down on a three-point shot. And that's Mario Chalmers. Remember, he was limping late in the first half. In the first half on the Kansas bench. He starts here in the second half. Still limping a little bit, too. Let's go back and check on our star watch. An update. Dominique Kirk now has eight points. Darnell Jackson with a half dozen. They each have two rebounds. Bo Muehlbach, who comes from a football family. Looks like he could play a little football, doesn't he? Take a look at him. If he didn't play football, he's missing a good chance. Boy, 6'5", senior from Lufkin, Texas. Transferred from Arizona. Got two of the three. And the extra one coming. What about those shoes he's wearing? What kind of a lavender tone to them? Both these schools featuring the Adidas shoes. What are happened to Chuck? They still got those? I have no idea. <laughs> I think the Rockers are wearing those. <laughs> Down inside, the ball knocked away out of bounds. It'll stay with KU. 26 seconds left on the shot clock. Kansas opened the ball game trying to power the ball inside. That's the way they're opening in the second half. Darrell Arthur working the low blocks. I don't want to say I've been around a while, but I thought it was pretty darn exciting in high school when we got white Chuck Taylor. I thought that was pretty fancy. Now we got a foul call. That happened with 14 seconds on the shot clock. This ESPN Plus game is brought to you by Whataburger, just like you like it. By this time last night, Texas A&M was already in some foul trouble. That was pretty well distributed throughout their roster. Nobody in big trouble right now. Arnell Jackson off the front of the rim. 6'8", senior, Oklahoma City's Midwest City High School. Pretty good free throw shooter, too. He's a 71% shooter. He came up short on that one, and that one got rimmed, but goes down. 37 all tied. There have been some good games in this tournament. Guard play has been outstanding for Texas A&M here this afternoon. This is the stage of the ball game last night. The Kansas turned it around against Nebraska. Up the tempo of their defense. The defensive pressure got some steals early in the second half. See if A&M can fight them off here. Early stages in the second stanza today. What a long try by Josh Carter. He's hit the deck, but nothing called. And Muehlbach saves the long rebound. The Aggies get a new possession and a new shot call. Josh Carter now 0 for 4 from deep here this afternoon. AM and would love to get him off this night. How about the Aggies show the patience they're showing and the discipline they're showing on offense here? Mark Hurgeon knew how he wanted to attack the Jayhawks and his club executing it right now. Ryan Davis turn around.